Hi. Thank you for watching this video. This is Kirtan here. Your Dynamics 365 Prime customer trend. So today we are going to look into how to do the customization with event handlers. So there are two aspects of how to approach a customization. Either you can do it through extension where you can implement chain of commands or you can do it through event handlers. Both of these approaches have their own pros and cons. For example, if you are going with the extension and implement chain of commands, you are primarily looking at creating a new class where you are actually creating an extension of the base class which is overriding the base class and you will be trying to override the base method which is sometimes easier and sometimes you might need to attach your code where certain operations are performed like certain events happen and in those scenarios you definitely want to go with event handlers so event handlers can be created for various events there are standard events which are made available by microsoft out of the box which as a developer we can utilize to subscribe and write our custom logic so all these events depending on the objects varies so there are various event methods which are on at a form level design level data source level table level and at a class level so we'll look into the list of all the events which are available for us to use for subscription also we'll have a look at uh, an example where we will see how to write an event handler method for our customization purpose so let's get right into it so i have listed down the methods which are available for us to use for event subscription so there are various objects for which the methods are available and which has preceding and succeeding events for us to utilize for the customization so preceding event is something which happens before the method is executed and succeeding event is something which happens after the method is executed so these are the two events this is the distinction between them so for data source you have active delete validate write write create execute query link active init validate delete re read selection change mark change re and leave records all these methods are self explanatory based on their naming convention so this is actually at a data source so on a data source you will see all these methods and you can go ahead and use the event for you to do the customization now this is for form control source so you have form controls on your gui so a form control has all these events like modified validate leave enter go to focus click selection change page activated allow page activated expand type change and that dialog close dialog closed so these are all again self explanatory based on the naming convention and we can utilize preceding and succeeding event based on our scenario where you we would like to do our customization so you need to figure out that on which event you want to trigger your custom code for example if you want to trigger something before a button is clicked it's not possible but if you want to do something after the button is clicked that's possible similarly if you are leaving a control and you want to do some sort of validation that's possible even after losing a focus you can do that so based on the events you can find out what type of customization and what type of modification i can do with all, all these objects and with the events next one is form object methods so form is our object where we have multiple methods and these are the methods where we have 
preceding and succeeding events for us to write event handler. So we have init, close, run, activate, self-explanatory again based on the naming convention. Next one is table object methods. So we have tables. These are the objects which has multiple methods where we can utilize our event for us to write our custom logic. So for example, validate write is a standard method which comes with all the tables. Most of the tables you will see validate write method is already implemented. So most so if you want to do some sort of customization after adding a customized field, you might be going ahead with the extension of writing a table extension in this scenario where you will override or do the chain of command for your validate write. Similarly, you can write same logic in validating write or validated write. In those methods, you can write your custom logic for validating your field values. Similarly, there are various methods for us to utilize for preceding and succeeding event for our customization at a table level methods. So now we'll get into a exa an example of how to write event handler in our Dynamics 365 f and o. So for our example, I'm going to add a class, which would be my event handler class. So I'm going to name it as demo. It is a standard practice to have event handler in the naming convention for the event handler class. So it is easy to identify that, okay, this class is referring to event handler for so and so object. For example, I'll be, I'm actually writing a demo. So I'm writing demo event handler, but for uh, naming convention, I can put it as demo cust, cust table form event handler. Similarly, if you have a data source, you can write cust table form data source event handler. If you have a table, you can write cust table event handler. So you can bifurcate easily that, okay, this class is referring to what sort of customization. So I have done the naming, I'll add it to my project. So now the class is ready. Now I have to write my event handler method in this. So it's quite easy to get the skeleton of the event handler. You just need to go to cust table form. So I'll go to my standard cust table open designer. So once you open the designer, you will see all the methods and you will see the events on activated, on closing, on initialized. So if I right click this, I can just directly copy this event handler method. And I can, so if you have done some sort of customization or if you want to see the standard code, you can just click on find event handler. So you will be seeing all the event handlers which are subscribed to this event. Similarly, as we saw in the list, there are certain table object, uh, sorry, form object methods, which already has event handlers. So you can right click on, so I will right click on class declaration and you will see copy event handler method, pre event handler, post event handler. Similarly, I'll go on init and I'll right click and I can just click on copy event handler method. Whether I want to do the pre event or post event, I can just select from here. So if you click on post event handler and so now the skeleton is copied, you just need to say paste or control V and here you will see that post event handler form cust table and form method is cust table in it. So we are writing a code for form method of cust table in it, which is a post event handler. Similarly, I can just copy pre event handler and write it and paste it over here. 
so i am writing a math and event handler for init which is referring to pre event handler of the init method so this is at a form object level similarly i can write i can copy this event handler on activated if the form is activated i want to perform certain operations and you can just write it over here simple as that okay so now but you will see that in the definition of the method the declaration varies based on which event handler you are copying or you are paste or you are trying to modify so as you can see first one was event post event handler this one is form event handler so and also you will see form and form event type so these are form event type and these are handlers for the methods so that's the difference and you can make out from the definition now i can go to table data source and at the data source level also you can see that i have in it i can sorry you can go to events and on in it i can just copy and copy event handler and i can just paste the event handler method so here also you will see that my event handler definition is form data source event handler form data source str which is specifying which is the data source i am using on which form and which event type i am trying to subscribe now we can go to a control so i'll go to tab and tab has events i can go to so let's go to tab and i want to go to this uh, button and on the button also you can see on clicked and i can just copy event handler and just paste it over here so you can see that we have button event handler form control event handler now so these are various types of events you can do it for a form or you can do it on a table or you can do it on a data source and you can do it on a form control now similarly if i want to go to a class now here i have various class so i am going to custom table form just for the example i'll go to custom table form and it has various method on initialize i will just uh, let me open this open designer i can just right click this class so you can actually write event for a classes also and you can just right click the method and copy the event handler either post or pre event handler so some sometimes it is available sometimes it is not available so you need uh, so whenever you try to do this you might be prompted that okay this is available this is not available so let's take an example of patch uh, form patch agreement form method create okay let me see if any method is available for us to subscribe so i'll create copy event handler post yeah so this is available for my subscription so i can just put it over here and here you can see the post event handler for class and this method and method str is available so you can use this eventing for your customization at a class method events also so all this customization and i have created a single repository so normal normally 
if you are working on a project where you need to do a customization on a on an object which has table form and related classes and ssrs reports so normally you can you will be creating separate separate classes for table form and cla uh, table form and uh, classes you will not be writing a same single class for it this is just for the example i have written like this back my this my data source now my sender is ds so sender dot form dot data source and i will look for table str cast table okay so now i have this uh data source of my cast table now i can write some on activated i'll do certain operations so i will first i will assign the cast table object cast table cast table goes to ds dot cursor so i have the current record and after that if cast table dot account number equals equals to so and so so i'm just writing test now here i can write i can make certain fields mandatory or non mandatory based on the uh, account number so for example i'll just do name no name is not there so let's take bank account dot bank account equals to if the test is there bank account equals to adcv so this is just a customization this is not the real time scenario but you might come across a scenario where you will be modifying and uh, accessing this methods for your customization so i hope this helps you in your customization and uh, it will help you in your journey for x++